include State House staff, uh, colleagues from the media um, that are present. You're welcome uh, to this morning's briefing. And uh, let me start by um, first um, appreciating that or reminding us ourselves that on the 5th of June, we had a press briefing right here. And amongst the things we discussed were issues around the disaster and the emergency declaration and what we as a nation should be focusing on. I did cover a number of other things, the media will remember, but uh, one of the key things was how we move towards uh, protecting our citizens uh, from going hungry, number one. And number two, to increase our resilience, improve, improve our resilience as a nation, given the climate change damage that has been occasioned for many years. We expect that we will have more droughts in, in the future, all floods, all indeed drought and flood in the same season as it has happened before. So the nation must begin to act and manage itself differently. So today I'm here to give you an update of developments that have taken place since the 5th of June 2024 when we had a press brief briefing right here. So, so the nation can be fully informed of the work that is going on. Because one of the issues I have picked myself uh, and I think others, including yourselves in the media, that we're not sharing as much information uh, as is necessary for the country to work together hand in hand as we fight this drought-induced disaster and indeed emergency. So I want to urge my colleagues in cabinet as individual ministers in their portfolios to be briefing the nation regularly and also cabinet office, because that is our duty as public officers to keep our stakeholders, our employers, citizens, residents, those who live, do business here, completely in the know of what we're doing, so that they can come on board to provide their support. So that is the intention of today's press briefing. And let me start by saying, having given that background, as I said, this package of, if you like, exposure should continue, uh, media minister, should continue in an organized way, I think in a, in a structured way, and the disaster team must also keep briefing the people. I'm, I'm, I'm coming around this issue uh, because it's important. I'm seeing some gaps myself. So it is important, and when it's necessary, the president will also come on board to reinforce um, and also make appeals as I would do today, as I would do today. So disaster and emergency declared, measures begin to be taken to address that, and we were proactive. As I said to you last press briefing here, we were the first country in the region to declare the disaster and emergence. As you know, this drought affects Southern Africa. And other countries followed. But we also went ahead as SADC. All SADC member countries resolved that this, disaster, this drought is a disaster. So SADC declared a disaster, the whole SADC, which includes us. But we were ahead of the pack. Now, I said already two critical issues to feed our people, number one, in this difficult time, during this war. This is a war of some kind. Wars come in different forms. This is a war. And number two, again, I like going around the point, so I drive it home. Resilience, including storage capacity. But to do this, we need to raise resources. We need to raise resources. We made an appeal 
to raise resources locally, regionally, internationally. And I'll come to this point just now. The appeal has gone wide. I'm just coming from a visit to the UK. Met King Charles III, raised this issue, pledged their support. This week, we'll have another cooperating partners coming here, traveling here, to offer their support towards this emergence. I think citizens need to know that you are not alone, we are not alone. But it is said that charity begins at home. We make the appeal, yes, for support, but we must walk the talk as a nation. So the president asked cabinet and cabinet agreed and therefore instructed the Minister of Finance and National Planning to review, to realign, completely realign the 2024 national budget so we can take the first steps as citizens of Zambia in raising resources to feed the vulnerable 84 districts and to increase resilience. Since our 5th June 2024 press conference here, press briefing here, the minister has since acted on that instruction. And I think you have followed. I was away last week. I think this was presented in, in, in Parliament. And I do believe it will be or it has been approved. Has it been approved, ministers? So we believe it will be approved. Should be, will be approved. And this is a complete realignment to move resources, colleagues, away from non-essential areas. Let me use another word. To move resources from non-critical areas. I think everything in the budget is important. But as life is, there are things that are more important than others when you are faced with a situation like this. So that's the theme. Look at each ministry. See the budget that was allocated in 2024, approved by Parliament. Re-look at that and say, for example, that workshop is not critical. Colleagues, that trip is not critical. It can wait. Buying so many reams of paper is not necessary now. It's not critical. We can do with smaller quantities. I'm articulating the process, the flow, so citizens can understand what is happening with their own resource envelope. So then we move resources from those non-critical areas towards the disaster and emergency appeal, the budget they are in. I think by now you all know it, $1.4 billion. So when we first declared in February, there was a resource envelope. This is the total required. This is what the government has raised. This is what we are asking from outsiders. Now we've gone ahead to do even more. We said to the Minister of Finance, we can skin this budget even more. And that's what I'm reporting to you has been done. And Parliament will do what it's supposed to do in line with this agenda of moving your resources towards the most needed areas to address this war we have, disaster-induced hunger, food, energy. And we want to indicate to you, public service workers who are in the procurement departments, who are what you, we may call procurement or supplies department, starting from the controller of 
natural, nat national resources, just to remind citizens, is the Secretary to the Treasury. The Minister of Finance, Secretary to the Treasury, is the chief financial controller in this country. And under him, our people on parallel his cabinet office, in the line ministries are permanent secretaries who are controlling officers. But they are ministers, cabinet. So my direction, not an appeal, on behalf of the people of Zambia, that all of those that sit in the procurement units must continue to rationalize on the resources that have been left even in the budget, the skinned budget, so we can continue to create savings and move those savings towards supporting the disaster and the emergency declaration. A bit of detail, but you need to know. So that's a direction. And citizens, government, citizens, government, citizens through the government, we will not tolerate abuse of public resources. And there is a particular ministry where action has already been taken, not mere talk, to basically act on those procurement officers who want to continue with old habits of overpricing and other ills. That's a message I'm giving to citizens. So your money should be better looked after ordinarily, but more importantly, now and going forward. There's no turning back. This will change the way we do things. This drought will change the way we do things in this country, the way we allocate resources in this country. So any de deviation from three principles, buying principles, right cost, number one, number two, the quality must be right, number three, deliver on time, will be basically a cause for administrative action or prosecution. And I said last press conference, when that happens to one of us, we should not be sympathetic to those people. On a appeal of political allegiance, no. On a appeal of ethnicity, no. On a appeal of religious affiliation, no. None of those things will apply. The rule book will be rigid going forward. That's what you do as a leadership in an, in an emergency. So we as a country are walking the talk, and that's why the global community is responding positively to our appeal. Because you can't make an appeal, and yet you want to buy VXs for public sector officers, ministers, judges, parliamentarians. It, it's not right. I must tell you, part of the reason I don't use the Gulf Stream is this. I knew this way ahead, that you can't throw extravagancy when you are reconstructing an economy where still now you have a drought. The two do not work together. Leadership must be by example at all levels, but also working for the public sector. It even obligates us to do even more. And my appeal is to the private sector as well to institute prudence measures. Because remember, the public purse gets its money from the privates through taxes and other revenues. That's a connection. So the whole country must be in a feel, feeling of the state of war, colleagues. That's the first thing I'm briefing you today. The second issue is to say because a drought has caused food insecurity, the drought has caused energy insecurity because we are largely hydro, the drought obviously has caused insecurity on drinking water for human, animal, and other industrial processes. As many people know that every industry actually uses water. You manufacture Coca-Cola, you use water. 
When anything you manufacture, you use water. So we have to now address all of these issues as complementary measures. On the food, I've already touched on it. But the FRIA or oh, the emergency disaster management, DMMU, every effort now and energy is driven towards, remember what I said, reversing the food supply chain. Where we buy from, in times of plenty, we are now pushing the maize and the food back in the same chain. Maybe contextual. Buying depots, where we buy maize, are the depots where we are taking maize now. And I would like citizens to help, including you, the media, to check how this is going on. We are checking, but please, we are each other's keeper. The intention is to do that reverse process so that our people can access food closer to their communities. We talk of rural areas. To get to a district center, some citizens have to travel maybe over 30, 40 kilometers, 100 kilometers. So the idea is to reverse these food buying points now into food supply points. As you talk to your fellow journalists across the country, just ask the question, how is it going there in these 84 districts? Cabinet Office, I would like media, I would like the nation to know these 84 districts on the back of their, their pumps so that they can help us monitor and check. We are doing our work. Please, I don't wish someone to say after this press briefing, the government has abrog abrogated its duty to monitor. No, we're doing that. But I'm asking for extra eyes. I hope we're together here. Extra eyes, because you're a citizen. This is your money, after all. This is your money. This is your resource envelope, after all. So that's what I'm asking. And also to continue enhancing the partnership on what we call national service, correctional services, milling companies, plus aligned millers, private millers that have agreed to work with the public sector millers to alleviate on the side of milling mill, the milling mill supply. I thought you need a brief on that. Water, water. There is now need to ensure that water for drinking, for cooking, for animals is available to the nation. And I don't know if I made, made a mention of this last time. We now we put measures to ensure that these water boreholes, as an example, are procured at the right cost. I mentioned last time my memory serves me right, that we had procurement colleagues that were procuring a boho plus accessories 300 to 500,000 kwacha one. During an emergency, you don't do things like that. So measures have now been taken to bring drillers together with the government, Minister of Water and other units, local government, everybody, to be able to negotiate these prices as I am told now, the digging to 80 meters fully case quality is important. It's around 45,000 kwacha. Plus facilitation facilities, 190,000 kwacha, as opposed to 500,000 kwacha each, which procurement colleagues were doing happily in an emergency. You don't do things like that. So we are clamping down on those issues. So you can see now, in one borehole, we probably can do three, two and a half to three boreholes. That's where we are going. And there will be no letting off on this. So we can do more water facilities. It will go for dam construction and for other things around there. Very important, colleagues. So this water issue is important. Water is life. If we don't provide water, 
it becomes a challenge. So that will apply to other water harvest facilities, requirements, dams, weirs. Get what we want, quality is right, the cost must come down. What this drought has shown to us in public sector, even you to citizens, you the citizens, is that we have been wasting money in this country for many years. We have been extravagant in this country. This will not continue under this leadership. For me, it actually confirmed my suspicions when I was still in opposition that the country was wasteful. That's why we are not growing as much as we should have grown, given our resources. So this drought is a slap in the face to accelerate the work we should have been doing 40 years back, which we didn't, including just the concept of water harvest, driving us into where we should be, irrigation agriculture. I'll come to that. Energy. Energy. I'm here to say to you, following since the 5th of June 2024, as of today, we have put in place more measures to support our fight against the drought and the emergence. In summary, the energy team has been working day and night, including myself. We work weekends, even when we're out on duty out there, we work because technology allows us to be working on the same assignment at the same time, even late in the night. It's just a work culture this country needs. That's a work culture this country needs. All of us, public sector, private sector, media. But this briefing also helps to report things correctly. Where there's a vacuum, since nature doesn't allow a vacuum, other things takes precedence, less than the correct information being shared. So the energy team, energy team, Ministry of Energy, ERB, Energy Regulatory Board, ZESCO, private power producers, I can talk to you specifically about CEC. By the way, CEC is partially owned by you. Government has shares in CEC. The work that CEC is doing is part of the government program. I want you to know that. Because I'm reading, as, as I told you, I, I scan what's going on. People isolate CEC as independent of what the government is doing. That's not true. That's why you've seen me going to CEC to officiate at the 30 megawatts power station solar at the 60 megawatts. I'm there. That's part of us. Remember CEC was hyped out of ZCCM and government retained some shares in there. So it's our institution. But the good news is that it's taking a private sector management drive. Fantastic. So, experts, energy experts, we in the government are working through an energy committee. And this energy committee has been directed and is working on specific measures that will help alleviate this crisis. Such as what? Such as what? Measures meant to ensure an interrupted power supply unlike what is going on now to hospitals key installations that's what we're working on now quite advanced as much power must be available within the context of the shortage to hospitals imagine a situation that there's an operation going on in a hospital and there's a lot shedding, power goes off, and someone is on the operating table. Will that person survive? 
colleagues, citizens. So your government is saying this is not to continue. Hospitals, institutions, we start with the public hospitals, but also private hospitals must fall in line. Health centers must fall in line. Imagine a premature child on the oxygen machine. And that oxygen machine is propelled by the energy. And there is load shedding. That child will die. We should not allow, and we will not allow those things to happen. So the president has clearly directed that this must be addressed like yesterday, within the shortage. Security installations, water utilities. If there's no water in the locations we live, we'll create new problems. Disease burden. So that's, since we met through here, 5th June, these are the measures we're now putting in place. And I've asked my colleagues to work night shift to burn the midnight candle. That's what we're doing in there. Colleges, universities, a kid is studying for examinations, they don't have power. We have to deal with this issue within the context of shortages. But these public institutions we're dealing with, but private institutions, they are asked to fall in line. Because education here is public and private, as hospitals are private, public. For the public purse, we focus on those immediately under the purview of government. The team has been directed and are working on what we are defining now as lifeline power supply for small businesses in the compounds, for example. They consume very little power. Should they suffer the load shedding as others who are consuming more power and can afford? That's the question. The answer is no. So we're looking at lifeline power su supply for small businesses that are negatively impacted by this energy insecurity occasioned by the drought. Colleagues, this is an update to you and through you, the nation. Burning the midnight candles to address these issues. That's the brief I'm giving to the nation as your servant. In order to do what I've just described, we need to address this third area I'm bringing today, the energy generation side. Measures that have been taken, yes, on recalling some of the power we're exporting, yes, we've done already. I've heard people three days ago talking about it. The government has done it already, ahead of that talk, because of the work we are doing in the energy committee. I think you heard of 100 megawatts. Also, what we're importing should come at the right price so we don't inject an increase in the cost of doing business. Therefore, the higher cost of living, therefore, the inflationary pressure. We are conscious of balancing these variables. That's why we're working very hard. And we invite suggestions from citizens, from anywhere, the global community now. We're reaching out to people to look at what others have done before us who are in this situation, given our domestic operating conditions, what is relevant to us, we, we take it. So the energy generation side, as we recall some of our exports, and we do it in a civilized way because we're increasing supply to surpass demand. When we're in that position, we need to export. 
That's why we have the Southern African power pool, to and fro, buying from each other. Now we are working on the interconnector, Tanzania, East Africa, so we can buy and sell from each other, depending on who is in a drought, who is in a difficult situation. That's the, the way the trade goes. Congo, Zambia interconnector, increase it. Zambia, Malawi, Mozambique interconnector. Zambia, Angola interconnector. Things we're working on. But back to the supply side. We have put in place measures, citizens. Open access to be operationalized. Meaning, whoever generates power here can send it to a customer there. In between here, there's a Zesco transmission line. Zesco is now obligated to carry that power. Before, Zesco had a choice to carry that power or not. That choice has been taken away from Zesco now. They have to carry that power from generation point to the consumption point, where it's needed. Be it a small restaurant in that corner, be it a hospital in that corner, be it a water installation in that corner. That power must move, open access to operationalize. What else are we doing? We bring in private sector, formalizing the private sector traders in power so they can trade efficiently from producers inside the country, outside the country, to where it's needed. Again, three principles. Quality of that power is important. The cost of that power is very, very important, not to inject pressures on the cost, domestic cost here, and moving it on time. Those are the measures we're taking, we've taken, we are making them available to you, and known to you, so we can communicate to each other properly. What else? Very important development, citizens. Net metering. Net metering. Let's stay alive in this conversation. I know we're used to sexy stories, alarmist stories, but these are issues that will address our shortage of energy. Net metering. operationalized, to be operationalized, is part of a critical measure. What does that mean? When it was assumed that investing in energy was only for rich people, only for big companies, this measure now will allow any one of you here to generate power on your rooftop through solar panels, as an example. If you qualify for partial withdrawal at NAPSA, before the 5th of June, no, before today or last week, you were not able to generate that power other than for your own use. Now you can generate that power for argument's sake, 50 kilowatts you generate on your rooftop. You consume 40 kilowatts, so you don't pay anyone a bill. You supply your own power. The difference 10 kilowatts, you can sell it to the grid now. First time ever in this country. This is long overdue. Your government is implementing this. Then you can trade and end value for those 10 kilowatts. That can go to five megawatts, that can go to any. So from the time we met and today, now citizens, ordinary citizens, widows, NAPSA, can, those beneficiaries, can actually generate power for themselves and sell the difference excess for value. Never happened before in this country. It's happening now. The operational measures are being worked on. The regulatory measures, the burden where you need too many processes have been cut down by this NH committee. It is called light processes. One or two pages. 
and Zema will not take 26 months as it used to take before. It will take a few days. So that is extremely important, and that will increase the supply side of energy, which is the point I'm making here. Small supply generation, solar, hydro if you wish, wind if you wish, and you have capacity, anything else, you are able to generate power now and put it in the grid. The laws amended, being amended, regulations, never before in this country, done. So now, as a consequence of this, we want to see a solar explosion to increase the supply. Win off some of us here seated ministers here, cabinet secretary and deputy, you can afford to put solar on your rooftop and generate more than you consume and the excess you put into the grid. Someone who needs that power, a saloon in Mandevu will get that power. I hope you can see practical measures, colleagues. So those of the citizens who can afford through this press briefing, I'm encouraging you to accelerate the decisions, to invest, to generate for your own need. When you do that, you release some power on the grid to somebody else. Let's assume HH at his community house does that. And I'm required by this government, by the people of Zambia, to do it. And the people that live in the community house with me, there are many. When we do it, when we've done it, we'll release some power we consume there, and that power can go to Bowlen. So the barber shop in Bowlen doesn't have to be lot shedded. I hope you get the message. Very simple. Now it's going to be possible. But how can ordinary citizens know how to proceed? We're putting in place a mechanism to say to citizens, you want to do your solar panels on the roof, this is the technical spec you need, specification, this is the cost, this is where you get it from, this is the installation. Another opportunity for citizens there to do installations, youth, companies. But it will not just by word of mouth, it will be structured. You want to use that structure, use it. You have your own way, do it. But you have to have the technical spec correct so that it doesn't distort the grid. Bit of detail, maybe it's necessary. But all that rollout will come through to the people. So you don't have to worry for now. But we also expect the solar companies to bring the price down of solar. Why? We have removed the taxes. Your government has removed the taxes. So we don't wish to see a situation government has removed the tax which adds on to the price. The price remains the same or goes up when the cost has been, some of the cost has been brought down. We don't want that extortionist approach as well. And the team is working on that. And we're bringing on board what we call now aligned dealers so that we see that they're delivering quality to the citizens and to others. Never done before again. You want to do it on your own? You're okay. But if you need support, it will be there. And we're working again, as I said, very hard. So, what else are we expecting? We now expect you citizens to see an opportunity. I address Zambians in the UK. We had a meeting like this, conversation like this, and I invited them to do exactly what I'm inviting the rest of the citizens. Let's roll our sleeves. Let's stop complaining. Let's stop spending six, seven hours of the day, valuable hours on TikTok, social media, TikTok, TikTok. Organize yourselves, 10 of you. 
create a unit, a business unit, then approach the platforms I'm talking about, how you can invest. Some of the money, you can get it from the financial institutions. Is that possible? Yes, it's possible. Why? Because the market is there for power. Easy business, to be honest. Take advantage. Big supplies, we are dealing with the tariff issues. The, the team is dealing with the tariff issues. The tariff was a little bit low. Now we should allow the tariff to accommodate, encourage investors to come through, including yourselves, citizens. As I said to the London colleagues, UK colleagues, who we met in London, sit in London here, enjoy your coffee tea, but create a company, five, ten of you, raise a million dollars. A million dollars, you then borrow another one million dollars, you put a two megawatt power station. And all of a sudden, you have a good business back home and your government will support you. That message goes to all of us here. It doesn't matter whether you are an opposition politician or you are a civil servant or you are a farmer or you are what? What the country needs now is to encourage you to invest in energy generation. Small, medium, large. Then we'll outstrip, supply will outstrip demand. That's what we want to do. Very simple. No one should complain. No one should say, no, me, I'm left out. Come forward. Even the Ukwa guys, come. Come and invest and make genuine money, not nipping money from the public coffers. That is a no-go area. From the colleagues in cabinet today, you nip money from the public, cabinet office, state house, you're on your own. You can make money through this opportunity now. Invest clean business. And everybody will know what you are generating. Everybody will know the price you are selling it at. Everybody will know how much money you have made. And you have paid your taxes. Clean business. Why do you guys want to steal from the poor? And then you start making so much noise, unnecessary noise. Just do things that help the community. This is the opportunity. Big power. Before, after 5th of June when we met, we were grappling with 300 megawatts of power at Mamba Phase 2. Since we met colleagues, I called a meeting here of pension funds right in the cabinet room there, banks in this country, and we sat in there. I ran them through the challenges the drought has brought about and the need to generate diversified power, not just hydro. And I gave an example of Mamba Phase 2. It's a $400 million ticket cost to generate 300 megawatts. And by that time when we met, we were short of $80 million, $80 or $85 million. Need someone to, people are not active in this country on numbers. Somehow people fear numbers. Numbers make life easy. You don't cheat with numbers. Words you can play around and if you speak nicely, you can cheat people and get away with it. Numbers you don't cheat anybody because they expose you. I think it was 80 what? 80 million dollars. Thank you. Who is answering there? I want to see. Ah, Jito. He should have been answering much quicker. He's working with me on that in the energy team. So we were short of $80 million. I called these colleagues. We worked through lunch. I called the bank managing directors, pension fund chief executive. We sat and worked over lunch here. I said, I'm only giving you lunch after we agreed here. Before we agreed, no lunch. We reached agreement that they, after I made an appeal, President made an appeal, they will find the $80 million within a week or so to lend, not to give for free, to lend. Colleagues, after that, the meeting broke. They came in this room for lunch. By 20 hours that day, we had raised $90 million in this country, not outside, to support these measures. 
And today, member phase two, I believe, will be signed in a few days from now. Financial closure will be achieved. Is that correct, Jido? It's called the convening power. That's how you use the president. Not sending wrong information on TikTok about the president being a mason. Again, the same subject over and over. I go to Harriet Watt, I get my doctorate. People say, Have you, did you see the picture behind you? I don't own Harriet Watt. It's owned by the British, been in existence for 300, 200 to 300 years, university. Very reputable. You young is there? That's one of the universities. I go to Oxford, I make a presentation, someone says, did you see the pictures around? Oxford has been in existence for three, four hundred years. Now, is that what we should spend time on? Honestly, colleagues, we should spend time on raising eight million dollars so that we can bring on stream 300 megawatts. And I've rolled my sleeves. This president works. Whether you like him or not, this president works. And he expects cabinet to work, expects permanent secretary to work, public procurement to work. Every citizen must work. We became a lazy country over the years. We must replace laziness with hard work, smart work. We raised $90 million in one shot here. And the rest is detail now. And Mamba will soon, will announce soon the commencement of construction. I will leave it for that day. Today I've made a point that you can raise money, you can also gear, meaning you can borrow some money here in the economy and we'll facilitate that. Doesn't matter, as I said, if you are Ukwa, you have a project, bring it on board. It will be looked at positively because at some point we must work as one team. Even when we are competitors in the political arena, we are competitors in the business. In my days in business, I introduced something that was not there. I used to go and look for jobs bigger than what my company could do. Then I'll go to my competitors and say, no man, Deloitte, no man, Bazima, come on. This job requires Deloitte and Coopers and Ivory to work together. He was a partner there. I was running Coopers and Ivory. First time they see these two boys who are supposed to be competitors are actually working together on one assignment. Different mindsets. Totally different mindsets. That's what this, we want this country to see. We can argue on certain things. On this, over the drought, we should not argue. We should not exploit a drought to create trouble. We should work together. That's what the media must send a narrative on. You see some deviant individual trying to create confusion because of the drought, remind them that here you are supposed to work together as a nation. That's what we did. After 5th of June, what other measure did the energy committee take? On the supply side, brought in the energy, dollar energy company, brought them here. So guys, we have it, an issue here, supply. I'm glad to tell you that since the 5th of June 2024, we've now reached agreement with dollar energy. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chito. Am I right? to bring on board a supply of 105 megawatts. Tick that box. Tick that box. Since we met on the 5th of June and now. Concluded outstanding issues. There were a number, long checklist. I said, one day I brought a meeting here on the Saturday. I pray to God, today is my worship day, but forgive me in advance. I'm going to work on the Sabbath. And we had a meeting here before I left for London. One of the items we unlocked right here, just a couple of days ago, was the dollar energy. And today, I'm happy to report to you that that 105 megawatts must already been, it's already being fed in the grid. You can confirm that, say the recovery? There it is, the nation. Hard work, intentional work, directional work, not noise. 
not shouting at people. No, engage people. We have 105 megawatts in the grid now. And that's why you heard me talk about lifeline supply, supply to small barber shops, supply to you know, hospitals. That's why I can now confidently talk about that. What else did we agree? We agreed in the Energy Committee to blend the tariff. Generator A may be generating at 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Generator B may be generating at 9 cents per kilowatt hour. Don't worry about uh, the definition. Just catch the figures. 16, 8, maybe you're bringing power at 17 cents. We now have instructed the Energy Committee to technically look at what is called blending, mix, and then be able to supply the tariff to the hospitals, to the colleges, to whoever farmer irrigation mines at a balanced tariff, which is fair. So again, doesn't inject too much high cost, which will increase the cost of living through the inflation injection from energy. It's a complicated process, but we're working on it. And it's my duty to inform the citizens that this is what we're doing, so that they don't think that we're just making statements. No, we're not making statements. We're working very hard, and we invite all of us, you, whoever out there, to bring proposals better than what we are putting on the table ourselves, and we'll take them on as long as they help the situation in the tract. I can go on. I think I've made a point of since we met here, what have we done? What have we concluded? What are we still working on? A lot of other things. There's a lot on the table, but we'll be informing you as we move forward. So. I've touched the budget realignment 2024 to walk the talk to raise money. I've touched on the water supply, the importance of water supply, harvest for various needs, including irrigation agriculture. I've touched on the energy priorities and the generation site and the trade. I've touched on the various projects, some of them are sizable enough, like Dollar Energy, like Mamba Festo. But we are now inviting any one of you to make these investments and will be supported, wholly supported. This team will support you. This president will support you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten of you. You create a unity, you want to produce 100 kilowatts, only 100 kilowatts. This team will support you. Where you fall short, we'll direct you that you can go to NAPSA, you can go to APSA, you can go to Zanako, and we'll talk to Zanako on your behalf if you need us to do that. This should bring Zambians together rather than dividing them, honestly speaking. Us in the public sector, one mild point I want to make, but very important, we must work harder. This fellow here was brought up in a couch of hard work. And I know you are, you were brought up in a couch of hard work. Let's use this culture, this art of hard work. President, ministers, cabinet office, permanent secretaries, driver. You're supposed to deliver something somewhere, deliver it. You will find your family there. They'll wait for you. Deliver it. You are supposed to sign a document to conclude a transaction to assist alleviate on the drought and emergency. Sign it. Don't sit on it. You're supposed to have a board meeting. You are ERB. Let me just give you an example. I'm very proud of what the reorganized ERB did. I called them to that Saturday meeting here. 
and we made resolutions on these things I've told you, blending, net metering, right, open access implementation, and some of those things sat in the Energy Regulation Board. We met on Saturday, the new chairman, the new chairman, the deputy chair of ERB, the chair is, uh, remind me, James Mann. James Mann. I said to James in that meeting, James, who is a colleague, and to the Zesco managing director, I said, you, you boys, they are men, but they are friends. I said, you boys have to work as twins to solve these problems. We don't want to hear the board is pulling its legs, the management is pulling its legs. The following day, on Sunday, ERB had a board meeting, colleagues, to approve the decisions we made on Saturday. Within 24 hours, they had a board meeting to approve. It hasn't happened in this country. The work culture was that if you are a, a utility, a public institution, you are cabinet office, you will meet on Monday. Things will wait. I corner, Mr. Kangwa. Nothing will wait. Minister Foreign Affairs, Minister Mines, Minister Media, nothing will wait. That's a direction from the President. Things have to be done yesterday. And ERB board met on Sunday to approve as a regulator. So today I'm able to announce these things. As I returned only three, four days ago, doing excellent work for the country. If I'm not mistaken, the official meeting with the UK Crown was last done by KK in 1983. You can correct me. I'm not talking about meeting the Prime Minister, meeting them. I'm talking about having an official meeting in with the Crown since 1983. This is the second one. I stand to be corrected. I beg your pardon. And you see the support. Shortly after that meeting, the British government immediately announced that they will support us in this emergency to help construct the Zambia-Tanzania interconnector, $15 million. Colleagues, th these things are not jokes. This is serious business. I used to say, tell you in the opposition that running a country is not a, a joke, it's not a game, because people used to call politics as a game. I refused then, I refuse now. Politics is serious business. $15 million. I don't know if you've been communicated to already. The communique is coming. That's not a joke. First Minister Scotland, more support were organized, including drought disaster support. Please follow. My team will give you the details. Encourage Zambians to invest home. Please follow them up. Action points. Hakuna kulala. Being Minister of Foreign Affairs is a serious indictment to hard work, even at zero two in the morning because of time zone differences. We work. Oxford University time, researchers are now are looking at how we can lower the cost of doing roads, how we can recharge Lusaka underground water. Excellent student, brilliant student, genius young man there who is doing a research and I was made to meet these guys in Zambia to improve the aquifers as we respond to the drought situation. It was what we were doing at Oxford University. In addition to me presenting a paper there. Good discussions, all intentional, all geared towards solving our problems here. Now we have agreed there again, Minister of Education was there a menu of actions we're taking there to quickly take in the research outcomes from there and other universities, including Harriet Watt. We've agreed a mechanism to, uh, to utilize the research and technological advancement there to help us solve 
our issues together with domestic research results. That's not a, a game. You can't call politics a game. You can't, colleagues. You shouldn't. So I'm back. ERB was able to take decisions on Sunday. Ordinarily, they would say, no, 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 we'll issue out a call out to directors, and the, direct, the law says you need 30 days before you convene a board meeting. I'm nullifying those things. It's for you, the Minister of Justice, Minister the Attorney General, to deal with those issues. You can't deal with those issues in an emergency. You can't say we can only meet after 30 day notice. 30 day, people will die of theft. I mean, th theft. Theft. Right? So that is the message I'm delivering to the country. We have a lot of work to do. And civil servants, public officers, Mr. Kangwa, we should be working 24 7 every day. The president is taking the lead. You must do the same. Ministers must do the same. Everybody, including a cleaner, must do the same. And I am inviting the private sector to do similar things. If they are not already ahead of us, I believe they are ahead of us, but we want to basically work together at par. As a consequence of that, you heard me say that work is not eight hours to 17 hours. That's hanging around. We expect work done all the time. Mr. Kangwa, Secretary of the Cabinet, I'm overriding your decision. From today, civil servants who have access to transport must have that access to transport 24 hours in a day. <laughs> so that it is not the reason they are not delivering. Are you together? Are we together? It's not the reason they are not working because they say, no, no, I couldn't respond to this because I've been told by Secretary of the Cabinet that I pack my car and I can't use it. Your cars will be available. After all, they are taxpayers' cars. Use them responsibly, sparingly, to deliver for the owners of the cars. I hope, Secretary of the Cabinet, you can now move on that direction from this minute. No excuse, work must be done. For access to a public vehicle, it's available to, to you 24 hours in a day. For you to do what? Not to go drinking, not to go dancing around, but to go to work, to alleviate the energy issues, to alleviate, to check whether maize is gone to that depot in Chikankata, my friend, in Mawetova. Huh? to make sure that that maize is available in Kashinakash, that maize is available in Kambombo, in Chama, in Chikalawa, in Chief Mwanjabantu. I'm a very proud Zambian. I know this country. I've traversed it. So it's difficult to cheat me. My colleagues in cabinet have to think twice before they bring a cab memo to the cabinet meeting. I look into I read myself. I look into it as a... Ah, I corner. This is not correct. So those vehicles will be used now to go and check whether the food is reaching the people, whether the procurement officers are quoting the right prices. Go into Cairo Road. Go in Cognito there. Go and get a quotation. That's how we quote the people in water supply, in the Ministry of Water. We went to the same drillers where they were getting 500,000. I sent someone. I won't mention their name because you may beat them when you see them next time if you are a procurement officer who's been used to overcharging. Same drillers, madam, sent them there. They got the right quotation. Then after we brought them to the table, why did you do this quotation? He says, no, no, that's what I was told. This is my price. But the procurement officer said, no, no, just put this price. This is what this country has been going through, bleeding throughout. That's a crime. So that's why the president has made that decision, that the instruments, computers, vehicles, not VXs, no, ordinary, must be available to work for the people from this moment. The rest is for you to implement, Secretary of the Cabinet. Your intentions were well meant, but I'm seeing a misunderstanding, a misalignment. People will find an excuse not to do the work. 
So let's clear that misunderstanding. The vehicles are there. Akubo men. Amusebeze, Vanik. Here is my call as I close. We all have to be part of the climate mitigation measures, resilience building, all of us. Here is an appeal I'm making to the people of Zambia. Let's take individual actions, family actions, community actions. In what areas? Let's conserve our resources. In times of hardships, like now, let's conserve our resources. Hmm? In all areas, hunger is biblical. The time of the children of Israel. Remember? Eight years of plenty? No, seven. Seven years of plenty and seven years of what? You're not Christians. I thought you accused me of being a non-Christian. Me, I'm an elder, a serious elder. Seven years of plenty and seven years of hunger, famine. It's in the Bible. How is it that today people can say, my colleagues in opposition, that HH has brought this hunger and the Drought. How, colleagues? Even if you think HH is a, is a manipulator or whatever, is a magician, only God decides. Of course, climate change damage has caused these problems. Even the maize, in case you don't know, you can't keep the maize for three years, four years, which you produce. It will go bad. So you have to keep shoveling it. Eh? That which you produced last year, you must send it for consumption somewhere, in, inside here or to someone who needs it. That's a trade. You have to fumigate, yes. That's what somebody will now say, ah, what was he talking about? Please, I was brought up in that environment myself. Skip maize bans. Let's conserve food. At the household level, let's conserve food. Keep some for the family. Don't sell everything. That's my appeal. Food, let's conserve it. Let's cook what is enough. Let's not cook more than what the family members consume and the rest you throw away in the bin. That's what you do in times of hunger, find times of famine, that's what we do. Biblically, historically, can we do that? Let's conserve Water. Let's conserve energy. Don't leave the lights on. When you go outside your room, switch off the lights. Whether it's your own generated power, since now you become power producers yourselves, madam. It's not a joke, it's serious. Just imagine it. You can become a businesswoman generating 100 kilowatts. And you use 30, 40, you sell 60. COVID. Conserve it. Why? Because someone else needs it. Conserve energy. Switch off the lights. Buy, what are they called? Energy saving bulbs. Remove those bulbs. Let's use gas cookers. Electric cookers, stoves consume too much power. Let's switch to gas stoves. Again, the energy team I talked about is working on those application measures to make it easier for households to replace electric cookers with gas cookers, which is even cheaper. Conserve resources. Conserve grass, trees. Please stop seeing people burning grass, even in the compounds, small area, burning trees and grass. You're, you're exacerbating the climate damage. But that grass could have been eaten by an animal. You burnt it. Let's stop burning bush. Irresponsible conduct. That's my appeal. And many other resources. You remember last year, last time I had to send Zaf to go and put out the fires on the Kafir Flats 
they went to Luang to, to Lukanga, and also we are looking at Bangueru swamps. Bush fires all over. What is it? What what is this culture of waste? Yes, we are acquiring bad habits. That's my appeal to citizens. Conserve the little we have. My last appeal. We need unity in this country. Nobody wins with divisive talk, insulting each other, name calling. I watch. I watch. Outside I smile. Inside I say, what is this all about? Let's support each other. As you are seated, three of you in that column, in that row. And there, support each other. Different ministries there, support each other. Support each other. There's value in doing that. Unity of purpose. Working together to go through this waste drought. And from there, build a culture of hand-holding. Families. Husbands, look after your wives. Work with your wives in conserving food in the house. Wives, look after your husbands. Children, look after your parents. Parents, look after your children. It starts there in the house. Let's reduce wastage of resources on self-aggrandizement. Excessive alcohol, excessive smoking, excessive indulg indulgence, restraint, unity leading to restraint, responsibility. And we shall overcome. We shall succeed. We'll come out of this drought stronger than ever before. As a Christian myself, the Bible is clear. God selected you today to be the journalist you are. To be the journalist you are. It's God's design. Because they knew that they would need someone like you during the drought who will report positively and in a building way. Negative stories, forget them. Don't give them legs to stand on. Just forget them. You see they will die out after a short while. Drive the positive stories. God knew that you should be the journalist in this media house today and tomorrow. And that goes for these ministers, the colleagues in cabinet. That goes for this fellow here. God cannot give us a, a Lord we cannot carry. So he says, he gives us the Lord, he knows we can carry it. If we don't carry it, we're lazy. We're not working hard enough. So we will carry this Lord, working together in love, in unity, not insults, not abuse. Finish. That's my message today. That's my concluding message today. Open our arms. Support mechanisms. Changing the laws and regulations. Getting people to meet in the night if it's necessary. The mindset of resolution of problems or challenges. That's what I ask the nation to do. That's it. The rest is mundane. The rest is detail. We keep this positive mind. And I made this comment at Oxford and Harriet Watt that no one should be held back by their past. Not a child who goes to school in the compound, in the village, like I did. No one should be judged by their past, but what they are doing to better their situation and that of other community members. That's how we should judge people. The people must be willing to change for the better and work hard. Thank you for your kind attention. Most appreciated, really. Most appreciated.
I will stand here as you continue. Thank you, Excellency. We now come to the point where we allow questions. We shall take them in sets of three. Please remember the rules. The President has been very clear. Let us uh, restrict our questions to what the President has addressed. I will give you the floor. And Go ahead. Thank you, Excellency. So we can have the first set of uh, three. We stick to the issues. Yes, we stick to the issues. Only what the President has addressed. I'll have uh, the lady in front and yourself. The third. There's no mic. Can come and use mine. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning. My name is Sandra Mninga from Sunny Fame Radio and TV. Mr. President, you have time and again emphasized on the need for the country to transform into a 24 hour economy with the aim to increase uh, jobs and productivity in the country. Now with the current drought that has had impact on the economy and may lead to job losses, how soon can we see this actualizing? I thank you. Good morning, Mr. President. My name is Masao Mukwaya from ZMBC. Mr. President, there's an emphasis for people to invest uh, in boreholes as, as an alternative source of water. But then, on the other hand, WAMA recently cautioned that majority of the boreholes in Lusaka and five provinces risk depleting groundwater. In the short term, what interventions are available? Thank you so much. There was one hand behind there. Karen. Okay, you come. You come. Morning, boss. My name is Karen Nchima uh, from Zanis. Mr. President, you've uh, talked about um, the power connector between Tanzania and um, Zambia. This project was started some, some time back in 2018 by the Patriot Front government. I'm saying the project uh, was started in 2018 by the PF government uh, from Iringa somewhere there, coming all the way into Zambia. But it never took off. And um, I meant to believe uh, they got a loan. And uh, the project itself was uh, projected to be at uh, 540 million US dollars. You've spoken about the 50 million dollars uh, support from the 15. Uh, thank you so much for the correction, sir. 15 million dollars. I just wanted to find out the total uh, cost which you expect to spend on that project. I'm asking because. Indeed, sir. And sure, sir. I'm asking because uh, when you traveled to Tanzania, uh, something came up that the government of Tanzania had um, given Zambia 400 megawatts of power. I, I also stand to be corrected on that. But because of the interconnector, we couldn't have that power. And how soon do we expect to see this project taking off? I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Excellency. You may address the three questions. And thank you very much to colleagues, three colleagues. Mulenga, if I got your name right. Yes. 24-hour um, economy, when are we going to realize that? Basically, Mulenga, this is the opportune time to get onto it. I've been talking about it myself, I think you know, for a long time. And one of the things that really, not to waste time, is that if you are managing a situation, you take over a business, you must first walk in and see exactly what is the challenge in that business. What are the key priorities in that business? Once you isolate them properly, and that's my background anyway, right? You then begin to deal with them properly. Some sequentially, 
one after another, some simultaneously at the same time. The country is not different. The first call for us was to understand the gravity of the damage that was done to this economy. Remember the breakdown in the rule of law. That was critical to restore that, to restore the rule of law, where by and large done that. People will misbehave once in a while, and they will, they will suffer the consequences. We've done that. Because you couldn't do anything much in an environment where there's no order, thuggery everywhere. And no one will be allowed to return to that thuggery. No one, at all levels. Whoever you are, you are planning thuggery in this country, you will not be allowed. Because it is an important ingredient to bring normalcy back to the country. And you can start looking at the economy and other things. Because what 24-hour economy would you have when you needed to go to an industrial area and you go through intercity and you are beaten to death there? So which worker will go to a factory at 20.02 in the morning knowing that the party thugs that time, those who controlled Lusaka, intercity, um, Kulima Tower, a place called Kamgodi. I know you never got to know Kamgodi. Maybe you did hear about it. Terrible place where people were beaten and punished and limbs broken. We had to rein in on those things as an environmental issue, operating environment, before you can talk of a 24-hour economy. Otherwise, no one will participate other than locking people up at 17 hours and opening the doors at six o'clock because you are afraid of crime and thuggery. Very important. What else? You couldn't do anything to really change this country with the debt overhang because you were a basket country. You know that? You couldn't access funding anyway. You are a basket country. You are deleric. You, you are a defaulter. You are disrespected. In a home, you borrow money to a point that even your wife's clothing and shoes are taken away by the creditor. You think your wife will respect the home? Even your children will say, ah, that's the environment we wear. So we have to deal with the debt issues. Others called it, it can never happen. They even were proudly holding press conferences. The very people who brought us the debt. No, 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 HH has failed and his team. Ah. Why did you mess up the well? Here, I'm cleaning up the well. You are dancing. We have achieved. Have you seen what has happened since we achieved that? Credit rating for the country has gone up. I know to some it doesn't matter because they don't uh, comprehend these things. Very important, extremely important issues. So I'm giving you the basic parameters. Safety, law and order, bus stops are free for people to use at any time. People should get on a wango. Huh? Taxis, isn't it? And I'm following now a few criminals are doing things on wango, Yango, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yango. We do not agree to that. Citizens who own Yango taxis are ordinary. They buy a car, lend, give it to Yango to run, owned by citizen. And you attack the driver, you damage the car, you're standing in front of that damage we want to, re to, to, to resolve towards the 24-hour economy. The operating environment. Let me not be over-descriptive. The operating environment must be right. The debt situation, normalcy, credit rating of the country must be one where you can borrow money. Not just borrow money, madam. You heard me talk about the reform of the global financial system. So you can borrow at a fair price. That's what we've been working on. Two years, nine months, ten months. We're pretty done on that. Housekeeping remains. So the environment is getting right. Now is the time to return to the 24-hour economy. Now, this is it. 
I didn't tell you something we agreed in the Energy Committee. We agreed, madam, that we understand the power, energy markets, hmm? Southern African power, pool. you were talking about it on television a few days ago. Yesterday? Yesterday. I watch. You did well. I watch. But I said, ah, let him mention this. Mention this. You mentioned things that were important. In that energy committee, the measures I was just outlining to you here, we have included what we are saying, opportunistic buying of energy. In the night, the energy is cheaper in the whole Southern African power pool. So now what we have instructed our colleagues is that they must bring in cheaper energy. Remember I was talking about blending the tariff. Expensive source, this one, that one, that one. Part of the blending we're working on now is to bring in power when the demand is low from the whole region in that interconnector thing, which is very important. Southern African power pool. means we are all connected in Southern Africa. Whoever has excess can sell to he who needs. And it's normal. I've heard my colleagues in the opposition criticizing that. That's lack of understanding. It's really what I call bad talk. That is bad talk. That's uh, the talk you raise in the bar after you've been in the bar for two hours. Because what you discuss in the bar after you are there 10 minutes is different. When you've been there two hours, it's different also. That's bad talk after you've been in the bar for two hours. That is sheer ignorance. That is a design to trade. So we have now instructed our colleagues in the energy group to buy power during the night when the demand is low and the price is lower. And then we want the farmers now not to irrigate in the day. Because otherwise I would have been saying so many things. Hmm? My friend. So we buy, get them to buy in cheaper power from the pool, give it to farmers, and we're saying to farmers, irrigators, don't irrigate during the day. Irrigate in the night. It's part of the night economy. Am I making sense to you? Between, 24, between 4th of June and today, these are the decisions we've taken. And so we expect that now farmers will be irrigating in the night. When they irrigate in the night, they should be able to move around in the field 24-7 at 0203 to check that the center pivot is working well, the drip irrigation is working well, and they will bring in power at a lower cost. It will reduce the cost of producing food. It will help reduce the price of millimeter. Simple. Thank you for that question. Really, really grateful, madam, that you raised that question. It's part of where we are going. And these are the measures we are taking in these difficult times. But we want you, the journalists, to work at your office as much as you want, knowing that you are free to go home when you need to. Somebody attacks you along the way, we must deal with them effectively and decisively. Masaoso, Mkwaya, very nice name. I love, where is Masaoso? Every time you read some narration, Masaoso Mkwaya, I tell my wife, I love that name. You have an admirer in me, in case you didn't know. Right? The Bohos, Wama says the groundwater recharge, absolutely right. Wama is right. What we've done now is to bring Wama and the clients and the drillers. Remember I said I like drillers, eh? So that we can do the water exploration properly, water siting. So that customers just don't dig. Sometimes you go and dig in a polluted area. Hmm? So now we were pulling these aspects together, the shortage of groundwater, especially in Lusaka. I know they talked about Chalala. I watched the clip you, I think you are referring to Chalala, different places. So that is why we need the water recharge. Remember, I said that Oxford, I met a brilliant Zambian doing a research on how to improve the water recharge. And his research is around Lusaka, in and around Lusaka, because we've done too many pavements in Lusaka. He was even saying in his presentation that we need to ask households to keep the pavements only where it's necessary. The rest, they must break the pavements and allow the grass and permeation. Are we together? To recharge. But it's also drought, in, drought injected. But even the little rain is not going under in Lusaka. 
it is flooding away. That's why you see floods of late. He gave me figures, very good graphs. And I just held my mouth. I said, can you now work with Wama? He says, okay, they are in touch, but they are slow. And I made a point to him. I got my team to make a point that I will follow up that matter with Wama so that we can get guidelines to allow the aquifer to recharge. We believe this season we may have better rain, but if we are ready for that, we then can have a bit more recharge. Where I live there is a recharge area in a way. Why do I say so? Because the perforation and the permeation of water is fantastic. You get a heavy downpour, after six minutes you don't see any water. It's going under. But because we have left the vegetation. Have you been to the community house? You have seen the vegetation. And this chap was able to pick my place. He says, you see, HH, like your place, there's good permeation there. So I said, why? He says, you have left the vegetation there. You have limited pavement. Say. Really? Research. And so, so the point, answer to your question, the challenge is there, but we can still drill water with expertise guiding her. Where we are drilling, how deep we go, how big is the ball? You can dig a 10-inch ball. You can dig an 8-inch, 6-inch, 4-inch, depending on the need. If it's for domestic consumption and it's for a small area, there's no need to dig a 10-inch ball. Those are the technical things I'm saying now. We'll be talking to each other. You, the customer, and Wama, and the drillers, plus the siting. But ultimately, we need the rains back, and we need to allow drainage. And the flooding issues in Lusaka will be ameliorated. Just imagine, double solution. So the short term, longer term, because you asked what's the short term measure, that's the one. Longer term, we need to allow the aquifer to recharge. That's why we need also groundwater harvesting. When you do a dam, in fact, around Lusaka, really, we should have dams around Lusaka where we direct the flood water, and they need to help recharge the underground. So it's a lot of work we need to do, part of this 24-hour economy. In Lusaka water, Wama, all of us must work together. But the platforms now are being brought together than before. Chima, Tanzania Interconnect started in 2013, 2018. I think it's older than that. The Tanzania Zambia Interconnector is much, much older than that. Colleagues in cabinet who have been in the public sector for a long time know that. When was it started? Much earlier than that. But in this country, current, things were never done. That's why we're now cleaning up the country, madam. Part of the cleanup was not just a foreign debt. It was domestic debt, arrears. People were buying fuel. All that fuel you were saying is cheaper fuel. They never paid for it. He raised that matter. He didn't complete the description. You said $800 million. $800 million. Close to a billion. I was watching. Close to a billion dollars. The PF was buying fuel and didn't pay for it. And, but we were collecting money through pump station sales, but never paid. Where, is it? Where did the money go? Where is the pride now in there? This government is cleaning up. As it was for the interconnect, we would check. These are part of the things we're checking. All money borrowed for particular projects, the audit will capture. And I can see people are very unsettled about that, very anxious and angry. I'm relaxed about it. Methodical, organized. I know you criticize me, you guys. Now slowly you should start believing us. You have to do things in an orderly way. Otherwise, you will not achieve much. So we are dismantling that pipeline. Karen, part of what we should have used is the fuel money, isn't it? To help us raise money and support that, those issues. Never done. Fertilizer was being bought, never paid for. We are dismantling all that debt. That's what a responsible government does. 
You're talking of interconnect. Why interconnect alone? What about FTJ Invest? What about Lusaka and Dollar Highway? Where's the money? Where's the $30 million for Lusaka and Dollar? Where's the $33 million for FTJ Invest in Mansa? And remember, there was even a comical argument. One former minister in PF said, no, the university is there. So people say, Mayo, Kabiye Nikumansa, Pepeapa, go and show us the invest. No shame at all. Zero. So Ebuntu. Zero shame. So all these are things we are looking at currently. Currently. But the good news is that we are accelerating that interconnect. And the appeal we have made, the British are making a contribution, the World Bank is making a contribution, we are making a contribution as part of the energy team I talked about from the 4th of June to now, part of the measures we have taken in place. I think you, show, you saw a, a news item that Zesco now, we have, we have dictated to Zesco that they will put together a unit to accelerate the construction of the Zambia-Tanzania interconnector, which is, itself becomes the Zambia-Tanzania-East Africa interconnector which means now we can go up to Ethiopia to trade in power. If Ethiopia has more power than us, Kenya, we can buy. When we will have more power, and I know we will, they can buy. That is a design. And when you hear critics say, you're selling power, why were you selling power? Only eight months ago, we were in surplus of power. What do we do with it? The power, you can't keep it in a storeroom. You generate, you see, ignorance is a serious disease in this country. You generate it, you can't keep it in a storeroom, you can't lock it up. Other than the lithium batteries we're looking at on storage, the current hydro you, you generate it, you must sell it. Otherwise, it's called stranded power. Mujima. It's called isolated power. That's what is in Angola, that's what is in Tanzania. So that interconnect is important. We put in place a program now to accelerate the construction. Suppose we a two-year project under us, not under Variabambi. No. Uh, those, I can't speak for them. Can't speak for them. I can only speak for the UPND New Dawn government. So we had a two-year program. We are now saying, no, two years is too far. Can we accelerate it? Hence, the unit that has been created in Zesco to accelerate the construction and basically, I don't want to go into technicalities of what we're doing on the financial modeling. It's not necessary for the public. But it's important for the public to know that we are accelerating the work on the construction of the Tanzania-Zambia interconnector so that we can access the power. It doesn't matter too much, Karen, whether it's 400 megawatts, 200 megawatts. At least we will be able to trade to and fro. Today, there's a lot of rain in Tanzania. Next year, there may be a drought and they will be looking at the same interconnector to buy power from us. So sometimes I listen to these arguments and I say, so now, if, if people, blind people are trying to lead people, how does it work? Blind people have been trying to, have been leading people. So how does it work? I don't mean physical blindness, don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about ignorance. Ignorance leading people. How do you develop? That's what's going on. Sometimes we must reserve our comments. If you are not sure of the facts or technicality, reserve your comments. Don't make it, because you just expose it. But God works in his own ways. Eh? He allows people to expose themselves, and people can make a judgment. That is the interconnector story. We'll be looking into that. Thank you. I wish we could uh, continue, but Your Excellency has engagements in Livingstone, and the people of Livingstone are waiting. So uh, it only remains now to say thank you to Your Excellency and invite everyone to stand as we close in singing the national anthem. National anthem, please. Stand and sing of Zambia, proud and free, land of work and joy in unity, victors in the struggle for their right. We've won freedom's